I wanted to start saying that normally people take sport just as a, as a leisure activity, something that we do when we are just bored. So, but at the same time, when they tell you that you just grab a ball when you have uh, nothing to do, that passion that comes if you like playing with that ball or that racket or that stick can propel you to push for projects forward. And that's what I think it's, it's important for us because um, when we are practicing sport, we learn how to deal with failure, learn with success also, and also how to work as a team. And we learn so many lessons about humanity. And if we are working for peace, we need to work as a team. And if we have sport as a tool to do it, then we will probably achieve it. And I like to introduce, well, I like to start this panel by asking the first question to Mark as, well, during your sporting career, Mark, uh, what triggered and inspired you to become activist within sport? So it's an interesting topic, sport and peace, especially as the Winter Olympics are going to be going to South Korea. My first Olympics were 30 years ago, also in South Korea, in Seoul. And at that time, to ensure the safety of the Olympians during the games, there was an Olympic truce that was signed. And that was my first taste of peace in the Olympics. And it was really uh, such a powerful idea. The medals from Seoul all have a dove on the back of them. The dove was to represent, of course, that symbol of peace. Um, that was really powerful, but also somewhat difficult in that at the opening ceremony, they released about 200 doves to fly to represent peace, and they flew all over the stadium and landed on flagpoles and cauldron and all over the place. And then they lit, lit, lit the Olympic torch, and the doves went up in flames. It was horrific. And they were falling on the infield. We're like dodging dead doves at the Olympics. So it was not a good start. You can actually Google it if you want to see the horror live. But uh, at those same Olympics, I have to say that there was a lot of attention on the East German programs. That was the first time the world of sport was really dealing with systemic doping. And as a Canadian, it was shocking to me that our biggest star, Ben Johnson, he won the 100 meters in track and field. He was tested positive for steroids and was disqualified, had his gold medal taken away. That was a huge shock to us as Canada and, and to go back to our country, the Olympics had a really dark cloud over them for a long time. People were really disenchanted with the idea of the Olympics. So my activism actually started after those Olympics. I chose to start to speak to school kids about the great stuff that happened at the Olympics, about the values, about the positive experiences. And in fact, I was thinking of retiring but in talking about how good it was and the experience, I talked myself back into swimming and went back to Barcelona to win the next one. I think that sometimes activism is frontline like that, speaking at schools, being a messenger, standing up for ideas you believe in. Sometimes it can be a little bit more subtle. Um, I was the head of the Olympic team. It's called the Chef de Mission in London in 2012. So I got to march with the team into the opening ceremonies. And when I got back to Canada, the many gay and lesbian people that across the country would come to me and say, I can't believe we saw an openly gay man leading our sport Olympic team into the opening ceremony. And I wasn't thinking in that moment that there's an awe. <laughs> thank you, Kate, thank you. I wasn't thinking in that moment that I was being an activist, but sometimes just being you, just showing up, just doing what needs to be done can actually inspire people to make change. So in, in that regards and like following on, on that thread, Hope, when, when did you start to realize like the power that you could have in sport? That's a very tough question. I think um, we can influence uh, a great deal of people through sport, but the word power is something so much stronger. Um, I would say that I've been an activist probably my entire, almost my entire life, for sure my entire career, but I didn't know it. I fought for better treatment, for better field conditions, for equal pay, of course, for better doctors, for safety on the field. I did this my entire career, but I was just, I just, 
thought that was the right thing to do. Why do these men get all these great stadiums and these great fields and the best doctors, and we're playing at high schools that were unsafe? So for me, it was a common sense thing. I didn't understand that I actually was making a movement. So I think for me, actually, the power that I saw in sport was not with the American team. It actually was with the Japanese team, and it was back in 2011 when the earthquake hit Japan, and then came the tsunami. Shortly thereafter, within a few weeks, we had to show up in Germany to play the World Cup. And the Japanese team, I, almost every single player knew somebody who had been affected by the earthquake and the tsunami. And they played for their country. They brought so much hope and joy to their country who was, uh, had lost so many people. That it was in the middle of the World Cup and the players still came to play and they didn't know where their family members were. They hadn't spoken to their family members. They didn't even know if they were alive. And these players showed up in Germany and they were the heart and soul of their country and they played the best football that you could ever imagine. And, and it wasn't even about the skill, it was about their hearts. And it was about them playing for something that was much more than just sports. And they brought hope and joy to their country. And I will say that I thought we were gonna win that World Cup, but that's when I realized they were playing for something that was much more important. And they beat us. We may have been a better skilled team, but they played for their country and they played for their hope of their entire nation. And that's when I saw the power of what sport can do. As you've guys seen this, these days, well, two days ago that we were playing our, our soccer match against Paraguay and, well, unfortunately we lost. We were all really <laughs> sad, but um, I wanted to ask Oscar, um, when did you see the power that sport could have for bringing people together? Bueno, a ver, les cuento una historia y es más o menos así. I will tell you a story and it goes like this. Para el 2001, en lo personal, estaba jugando para un equipo que se llama Boca Juniors de Argentina. On, <laughs> on 2001, I was playing for a team called Boca Juniors from Argentina. Ya llevaba cuatro años jugando en Argentina. I've been playing four years in Argentina. Y lamentablemente la información que salía para el exterior en relación a nuestro país no eran los mejores indicios. And sadly, the information that was going out from our country wasn't the best. Colombia se comprometió a realizar la primera Copa América para jugarse en nuestro país. Colombia committed to organize the first Copa América in our country. Y los índices de violencia no nos permitían pensar que íbamos a tener una Copa América tranquila. And our violence rates didn't allow us to think that we will have a calm Copa América. Durante el desarrollo de esta Copa América, demostramos que como país valemos mucho. During this Copa America, we showed that as country, we are really valuable. Que nos unimos como una sola patria, como un solo país con fuerzas y, y, y deseos de salir adelante. We united as one country and we had the strength and the wish to go um, further. Further. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> en resumen, logramos hacer una de las mejores Copas Américas de la historia en cuanto a asistencia a los estadios. We managed to organize one of the best Copa America in the history, uh, taking on account the amount of people that went to the stadiums. Los índices de violencia bajaron a un nivel que no creíamos que íbamos a llegar. Violence rates on the country go down a lot. We didn't thought we would make that. Y como país, como equipo de fútbol, entendiendo el compromiso que teníamos con el país, logramos la primera y única Copa América que ha logrado el, el, la Selección Colombia. And as soccer team, we managed to win the only Copa America that Colombia has ever won. Pero lo más lindo de todo esto es que el deporte, el fútbol, nos demostró que como país valíamos mucho y se lo podíamos demostrar al, a, al planeta entero. But the best of all of, all of this is that 
as sports people, we got to show the, the world that as country, we are really, really viable. <laughs> so, well, as you all heard and you know already, you're already experts in Colombia and the peace process. Um, we're currently going through it and we need to implement it. And I believe, and I also um, try to lead projects that deal with implementing peace through sport. Um, I want to ask well, all of my panelists, but starting with Oscar, um, in this current peace process, how could sport support it? How can we build peace through the use of sport? Como ya conocieron la primera historia, As you already listened to the first story, nos dimos cuenta que el deporte es un instrumento para socializar al país. We realized that sport is a tool to socialize the country. Hace ocho años hago parte de un proyecto que se llama World Coach. Since eight years ago, I'm part of a project called World Coach. Y embajador de un programa de responsabilidad social. And I'm ambassador of a social responsibility program. Donde el ejercicio es enseñarle a las personas de la comunidad. Where the exercise is to teach to the community people a enseñarle cómo deben manejar a los niños, a los chicos, a los adolescentes. To teach how they have to manage the children and the young people. No solamente a jugar al fútbol. Not only to play soccer. Sino a ser personas de bien. But to be good people. El impacto ha sido sobre 15 mil personas, 15 mil niños. The impact has been over 1,500 children. De zonas de alto riesgo. From high risk areas. Y hoy se está implementando un programa con un chico, and, o varios chicos, perdón. And we are implementing, implementing a program with various people. De una historia muy bonita. With beautiful stories. Un chico que era jefe de una pandilla en Cartagena. One guy that was the head of a gang in Cartagena. Y con el nuevo programa de implementación de paz. And with the new program of peace implementation. Está con los chicos que la guerrilla entregó al país. He is with the children that the guerrilla gave back to the country. Hace on, cuando él tenía 11 años, fue tomado. These children, when he was 11 years old, was taken. Y ahora está aprendiendo cómo enseñarle a otros niños a cómo socializar con nuestro país y reinsertarse con nuestro país. And now he is teaching other children in how to socialize and how to reintegrate to the country. Esa es la forma en que el deporte ayuda como herramienta a reinsertar, a socializar a nuestro país, a nuestra juventud. This is how sports helps as tool to reintegrate our youth and our children. No solamente con el fútbol, sino también con la cultura y la danza. Not only with soccer, but with culture and dance. Este programa se llama World Coach. This program is called World Coach. Uh, nice. So, I mean, I think that sport just is such an excellent example. Um, when you start, to, when you're part of a World Cup or you go to Olympic Games, it is extraordinary to walk through the Olympic Village and to see the entire world in one place represented completely in peace, completely invested. And through sport, you develop so many skills, but the most important thing is you see humanity. You see that the person from China and Iran and Russia and South America is just like me. Somehow, we're more connected than we are different. And it's an extraordinarily powerful lesson. I remember being in, in London in 2012 in the Olympic Village as Chef de Mission, seeing the team from Syria and thinking for them being in this village, this place of peace, must be so remarkable because they're leaving a civil war to represent their country, and they go back to that. So I think that somehow sport provides an example, it shows what's possible, and its byproduct is all sorts of incredible skill building that helps build better societies. Absolutely. That's Annie. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that, uh, what was the question? <laughs> I think there's uh, many different reasons, in, uh, many different ways we can bring peace within sport. Um, 
many different ways. We have a lot of great organizations like Street Soccer USA who provide a homeless World Cup for getting people off the streets and getting them off drugs and teaching them how to get back into society and get them off the streets and then they, they can compete in a, in a World Cup. There's great organizations within sport. Um, but I think it's important to mention that a lot of the talks that we've had throughout this, this, these last four days have been about equality. And we can't have a world of peace until we have equality. So, thank you. <laughs> so, I want to talk a little bit about equality in sport. Um, I, ha I got fired for pushing for equal pay. I got fired for pushing for what's ethically right, what's lawfully right in America. I got fired for wanting better treatment for women athletes, especially in women's football. I got fired. Mind you, I think it takes sacrifice to change what's going on in sport and in the world. It takes sacrifice. And what I'm excited to share with you guys today is after I got fired, shortly thereafter, the Republic of Ireland took on their federation and said, you know what? We just want our basic rights. Pay us. Give us doctors so that when we get injured on the field, we have proper care. The Republic of Ireland went on strike and stood up to their federation. After the Republic of Ireland did, the women from the Australian national team stood up to their federation. Just yesterday, eight of the best players from the Brazilian national team quit. They said, we will no longer wear our country's colors and play the game that we love in the World Cup and in the Olympics because we have endured decades of unfair treatment. Eight players stood up to their federation wow. yesterday. Just today, I'm so excited to share this with all of you, just today, the Norwegian Federation just announced that they are going to pay their women equally to the men. It is, wow. Wow. It is the first nation in the world to pay their women footballers equally to the men and we have started something incredible. U.S. soccer better be listening because it is happening, and it is happening slowly, but people are sacrificing, they're standing up, and they're doing it for the next generation. It started, and it's gonna continue to grow. It's going, it's, it's coming. Equality is coming. So, so as you all can see, like, sport has definitely a power to change public opinion about the things that we, think are just the status quo, they can be changed through the use of sport. Besides that, we can use it to bring humanity to our lives, to our projects, learn about many skills that are useful in life. And also, we have wonderful idols and sports uh, leaders that want and inspire people to keep on working for better projects, equality, diversity, inclusion, peace, and, well, I want to thank you all for, well, taking part in this panel. Uh, it's been an honor to share this, this space with you. And, uh, like, on a side note, I want to, I want to take this out. <laughs> <Thank you>. uh, <laughs> uh, do you want to stand? Should stand here? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was talking with them that we, and I, I want everyone in the world to work for sport in their countries, to keep on pushing for it. And I want to say that here in Colombia, we are definitely going to keep on pushing for sport. We're all committed to this. And, well, I also have, besides all the wonderful news that Hope has given us today, there's, like, especially for Colombia, there's wonderful news that she has to share to us. I am the bearer us. of great news today. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to speak to President Santos behind stage earlier today. And I asked him if he watched the epic match in the Olympics when the women's Colombian team played the American team. And it was a tie two to two. They tied the best team in the world two to two. It was incredible. And he said, of course he watched it. And I said, they tied the best team in the world. Can you imagine if they had even more support? And he said, yes, and we are working on that. All right. Oh.
Sí. Yeah. Una última cosa, y no solamente el deporte, la cultura y la educación. No solamente el deporte, hay que meterle a la cultura y la educación. Hello. It's not only sports, but also culture and education. So, thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure to be in upstage with all of these wonderful people. Thank you so much, all Thanks of you. Thanks for your